Project Gastronomia is really looking at the future of what a sustainable, healthy and delicious um, future looks like. Food systems are very complex and there are a bunch of challenges uh, coming in the future. Uh, and the only way to address them is to get together multidisciplinary experts from different fields across the food supply chain, scientists, chefs, designers, uh, and make them discuss about what trends are driving that future of food, about what possibilities, what opportunities do we have, and Project Gastronomia is the space uh, for that encounter and that conversation. Me, as a scientist, I, 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 I remember f I fell in love uh, with uh, the chefs because for me science is cold, can be cold. It's a, it's a good game, you can play a lot, but the chef can give you all the, 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 the heat. I think you know, we're taking on very much a paradigm of looking at people's appreciation and flavor, uh, of flavor, their satiety, their enjoyment of food, as rather than it just being kind of very one-dimensional, it's all about how the food kind of tastes and whether we enjoy the dish, at looking at all the sensory touch points that you have when it comes to experiencing a meal. So it's everything from when you first maybe book a restaurant or um, when you first walk into a school canteen or it's every um, element of the environment the sounds the textures um, the colors as well in the food but in the surrounding environment that really construct your uh, perception of flavor and taste we decided to come to london because we think if any place has all the potential to really achieve incredible, creative and research-based solutions towards the future, it is here. I've been helping with the program design. My work as a futurist is all about how we can help people engage and think differently about the future, challenge our assumptions. And so I've been working with Jose and Estefania to sort of build a program, to take the expert knowledge, but also to take the public knowledge and to have that produce uh, you know, some interesting outputs. The benefit here is working with a whole group of experts from all different fields, because food isn't just about the end product, it's about the whole food chain. And we've had some really fantastic discussions about maybe looking into the future and how we can influence the way the things go. Whenever we explore our regions and we see stuff and we, we're trying to get most of the emotions and you know like uh, the sounds, uh, the people, the stories, uh, the narrative of, of, of our menus are based on, 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 on our culture, uh, you know what's growing uh, uh, on different ecosystems so uh, yeah I think it's very yeah it's very necessary to create, um, uh, to, to put some emotion, you know, to our experiences. And, uh, you know, uh, emotions sometimes, sometimes are, are, I mean, emotions are huge nowadays. Uh, and uh, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's quite difficult to understand, you know, uh, how, 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 the, how the emotions uh, has, they have like a, so much impact in, in, a, in a gastronomic experience. I think there's a number of different challenges uh, that are going to happen over the next 30 years. The current challenges are climate change is obviously a very big issue. Um, climate is changing very quickly and the mitigation is going to mean that we're going to need to um, change the way we grow food, the way we consume food, the way we process food um, to ensure that that climate impact is low. It's still an early frontier but I think there's enough people now starting to kind of get the, um, uh, the ball rolling. and. These things never kind of happen overnight. This is a progressive kind of, uh, it's not a trend. It's something that is going to, I think, hopefully grow over the next couple of decades and that we'll find more chefs, um, you know, opening up these kind of discussions with designers, architects, um, uh, artists, uh, nutritionists and uh, doctors and so on, policy makers as well, and uh, really trying to um, n not only deliver great delicious food to people, but also do it in a way that um, is maybe educational and um, engages people with the right messages. Yeah, education has to change, has to be changed, of course. Um, you know, I remember that, that when, I, when I used to study to, to, to become a, a chef, a cook, and you know, we're working on, on details, on, on shaping stuff, on shaping nice vegetables. I think uh, probably that was a waste of time. I mean, probably it is. We need we need we need that knowledge, but 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 not that much of that. So uh, I think uh, probably uh, the education uh, for people uh, who has some good influence 
to other people, our education has to be much better. Yeah, there are two answers. One is there's no future without food, right? So like we have to figure this out. Uh, we heard a lot today about the challenges around population, around feeding, you know, different people. Obviously, when we think about challenges like food deserts, having access to you know healthy, sustainable food. Uh, but also around the kinds of foods that you know people are eating. So in a lot of developing contexts, sometimes you have a dual crisis of uh, of obesity, but also hunger. So like there's so many contradictions in the food system, and if we can start to move the food system, then we can fundamentally change anything. Uh, and I think that's why we want to always keep it about futures plural, and why looking at food futures is really critical. Because you can't talk about the food system without talking about politics, without talking about economics. So it touches on so many things, but it's also intimately personal, right? Everyone has a favorite food. Everyone has a favorite meal, a favorite restaurant. You have a memory with your family of sharing food, or you have this sense of, I, I understand food because of a certain type of experience, right? Maybe it's friends. So I think that's, it's the intimacy of food that I really think is important. And I think that it forces us and challenges us to think differently about our bodies, about technology. And so it really is a window into a wider world and to this sort of radical space for the future. I'm working in the Basque Culinary Center, and there um, um, we've got a degree in gastronomic sciences. What we really want to do is just to uh, teach uh, the, to the chefs or to the gastronomers all the scientific background, because uh, we really think that it's a really powerful tool for them. Because knowing uh, and uh, knowing the, the, the food itself means that you can control it and you can make uh, completely different new designs. I think chefs, in today's world, chefs are in a golden age in terms of uh, we've come out of the kitchens and are collaborating and working and having conversations with people of all different disciplines and backgrounds that we never otherwise would have. And I think going into the future, having that kind of uh, multidisciplinary, very rich um, kind of collaborative approach is going to really be um, the strength of kind of chefs going forward, especially those who want to have an impact on the world. I thought I had a, like a quite a small role here, but uh, probably our role is huge, it's big. I mean, everybody's role is here, here is big uh, because uh, we are talking and we are uh, making beautiful uh, dialogues about, about food, about, about the, the present, about the, the future. Um, Pre-gastronomy, I think it's a quite, quite, a, quite such a nice e event uh, where people are discussing about food and, and, and the future. And, and you know, um, we, are, we are on, on, on a constant debate about uh, you know, our, food, our food system, which is quite fantastic because uh, you know, we are facing reality. Yeah, look, I, I see lots of lots of room for hope. I see that there'll probably be an increase in plant-based um, diet. I think that will become more sophisticated and more engaging. Um, I think new proteins will come on the market. I think um, meat will still exist, and we'll still eat meat, and we'll enjoy meat, but we maybe will eat less meat. Um, but we will increase the amount of uh, other ground nuts and other, other types of food that we eat. I also think um, how and where we get our food from and what kinds of food we eat will, will change. And I think we'll discover some old um, sort of more traditional grains, some things that um, our parents and grandparents used to eat will all of a sudden become more accessible. Um, and I think some of those uh, different grains are more adaptable to climate and different spaces. So I think, I think it's going to be exciting. Well, certainly we need to be thinking about food in, in perhaps a different way and perhaps acknowledge the role that it plays with public health, with food safety and consumer protection. There are a lot of people who have very particular uh, religious, ethical, uh, and are very, very interested about the food that they eat. Maybe they have an allergy. And I think we need to take much more account of the people who really want to understand, have a deeper understanding of the food they're eating and, and perhaps where it comes from and the impact on their health. Well, I think this is part of our responsibility nowadays. And, and that's, that's why we have to maintain our minds and, and ourselves like, uh, in a continued uh, learning and, and trying to understand what's happening with with uh, you know, with the world, climate change, uh, people, uh, food, uh, soil, and trying to you know, you know, get into to understand better the the, the whole thing, and not just you know thinking about uh, our restaurants and 
and, and probably cliches that, that we already know. We're going to eat a lot of insects, perhaps, because the demand of, prote the demand of alternative sources of, pro of protein will increase. Uh, but there have been some interesting things that probably we hadn't thought, like how about if uh, there are aquaponic and hydroponic systems in your, within urban environments uh, that work managed by local small communities or blocks or flats? And how about if all the farm, the, let's say the nutrient in, inputs of those systems come from uh, or are extracted from, from, from the ocean? We can maybe tell you or uh, just research how to extract those proteins, for example. But in that interaction with the chaps, we could just make more sustainable, more, more, sustainable, more tasty and more healthy foods. Innovation often happens at the crossroads between disciplines where you bring experts together that are working in one space and they understand and see new spaces through the eyes of another discipline. And so this has happened in the, right back in the Renaissance with art and science and things like that. It's, it's no different here. So Project Great Gastronomy is bringing together different disciplines like designers, food safety, technology, different to, to think about food in a different way. So chefs are part of the solution, but they're not all the solution. Scientists are part of the solution, but they're not all. But we can all contribute something to create a future for food where everyone has something that's healthy and delicious and sustainable. For a scientist, it's like uh, air fresh and um, um, a way to, to do your, your kind of projects with more creativity and to see the whole view of everything. Well, that's the only way to work, I think, yeah. Uh, I mean, like, uh, if, if we are just, like, focusing on, on chefs or just focusing on, on consumers, I mean, like, we have to, we have, to have a, a wide, um, I mean, variety of people involved. Um, from Basque Culinary Center, we work uh, in, in innovation and research and um, in all our, our lines of business within uh, multidisciplinarity at its core. It's interesting you think about the future as a resource or as a commodity. And when I say that, and when people hear that, they often think, what? What are you, what are you talking about? But when we think about the, the trends and we think about the emerging issues, what the data tells us, uh, we create certain perceptions about the future. And we always already have a certain sense of what the future can and might be relative to our, our context, relative to our culture, right? Uh, the news media, uh, whether or not we get a bad email on a Monday morning versus a Friday afternoon. And so I think for me it really is about using that sense of the future uh, and trying to be literate as to how you know, these dystopias and utopias, these images really shape what we think is possible. Uh, how we call into the question the forces that are colonizing the future and how we find ways of building better futures. So for me it really is about a discussion and how we can get people to think differently uh, and that often means asking some difficult questions. Yeah, it, should, it, shouldn't, it shouldn't be any, any contradiction about, uh, about being local and, and, and global, you know? You know and, and and it's pretty, pretty, pretty much that uh, something that uh, is difficult for, for the people to understand. I mean, like, yeah, it it it, it, take, it takes me I mean, it takes me some time to understand, like, uh, you know, uh, how how much local am I in Peru? Because I'm using, uh, like, in my case, 100 percent of Peruvian produce, but most of the ideas are coming from all over the world. Even though there's a lot of tech component and uncertainty towards the future. We've seen among all the um, workshops that we hosted that we really crave for this idea of community, of connection, and we're not really yet ready to give that up that easily. Yeah, look, I mean, convenience is something that drives our society at the moment. And so convenience is meaning that people want food that's easy, accessible. We're all busy, we all have a lot to do. But at the same time, we also want to engage and enjoy the taste, the flavour, the experience of food. And so I think as convenience comes together with kind of the future and thinking about experience and some of the ex experimentation that will go around that, I think it could be really exciting. So um, I am increasingly encouraged by the different experiences that are happening. There's food cultures and cuisines that 10 years ago we didn't know about are now mainstream. You can get, go in London to a restaurant and, and, and get that food. And so I think that's going to continue to increase and so I'm, 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 I'm reasonably hopeful. Don't know if there'll be a plate or menu. No, but, uh, no, um, yeah, but that's the point. We don't know and that's the kind of interesting thing about where we are today is this is what we're trying to understand is what will a restaurant be? We have such a kind of clear idea now in our minds of what restaurants represent but even within my lifetime 
what a rep re restaurant represents and the notion of a restaurant is already changing. Even the idea of pop-ups and more temporary locations and just this whole idea of how we engage with food and how we engage socially with food um, is really, really changing. So I think it's really, it, it's almost impossible to predict in 2050 what restaurants will look like. But again, I think one of the key strengths is going to be this element of um, food as not only being kind of just about uh, nourishment, but food as an element of kind of, or dining as being about the social aspect and the entertainment aspect. I think all of that will really kind of feed into it.